Hello friends, Namaskar. When a person earns income from future and options, a very significant question which comes to him is that which all expenses he or she may claim in computing his or her FNO income. With this particular question being placed before me many a times through YouTube comments also, through YouTube queries also, I thought why not I should create a dedicated video on this particular topic. So my dear friends, in today's video, I'm going to share with you my views as to which all expenses can be claimed in computing the FNO income which you have earned from future and option transactions under the securities market. Now before commencing my discussion further, I must add that here I'm having a presumption, having an assumption that when you are computing FNO income, you are offering your future and option related income as business income. You are offering it as business income category because some of you might be offering FNO transaction related income as capital gain income. But my video, the present video is applicable only when you are assuming as if your FNO income is being offered as the business income. Now let me take you through all those uh, points, all those expenses which are in my mind which a person may be interested in claiming as a deduction in offering his FNO income as the business income. The first one which is a very common is the brokerage. If you incur any brokerage in conducting your FNO transactions, say whosoever is your broker, if you are uh, conducting FNO transactions, it must be charging you certain brokerage on per transaction basis. Maybe it is 1 rupee or 100 rupees, whatever. That brokerage is simply an expenditure which is duly eligible in claiming your FNO income. In addition to the brokerage, sometime and naturally would have been happening that on the brokerage, uh, which such securities transaction company is charging to you, they must also be applying GST on that. That GST is also an allowable expenditure. If I further take the stamp duty related example that many a state governments are charging stamp duty on per contract value basis on the securities transaction. So, Naturally, in my opinion, FNO transactions are also not away from such particular levy. So this stamp duty, if paid at the time of buying or selling an FNO transaction, would also be eligible for deduction in my opinion. Securities transaction tax, if that is applicable on FNO transaction and you have paid it, then at the time of purchase, it would form part of your cost. At the time of sale, it would be reduced in computing your net consideration value. So these are certainly allowable expenditure when you compute your FNO income as business income in my opinion. The list further continues my dear friends. Oh, if you have incurred any interest, say somebody says Mr. Bhatia, I took a loan of rupees 4 lakh to invest into FNO activities of mine and I did pay the interest amount on such FNO transactions on such funds which I borrowed for conducting FNO transactions. And if he asked me that, would I be able to claim that interest against my FNO income? My answer to him or her would be, yes, sir, why not? You can certainly claim that interest which you have incurred specifically in relation to the margin which you have put in with the securities transactions company for conducting FNO transaction. This is allowable. Some people may ask that, look, I have paid consultancy fees and many a time people do pay consultancy fees to a consultant who consults them, okay, you do this transactions, you take this call, you take this port, whatever. So that consultancy fee, my dear friend, if any pay, would certainly form part of your expenditure, which is allowable in computing the FNO income. However, I would add here one point that if there is some profit sharing formula which you have derived, Say, I suggest you some FNO and I say that, okay, whatever profit you generate or you offer me whatever profit you will generate, you will share with me 20% of the profit. My dear friends, if I go by the concepts of income tax law, the profit sharing is not treated to be allowable expenditure. So my advice here would be that it would be better if you can share such particular amount as consultancy fees rather than saying it or calling it a profit sharing because profit sharing is not allowed. So ideally what should happen that there can be an uh, MOU between you and your broker or the advisor who is suggesting you that okay you conduct uh, these particular transaction I'll give you consultancy and with that MOU being in place whatever you are paying is this consultancy fees that can be certainly claimed as a deduction. If you ask me that if there is some building rent 
then I would say, sir, you have to prove. Say, if I take a specific premise only for conducting my F&O transaction, say it's a business premise or an office area, where from I am conducting such F&O transaction, naturally that rent can be claimed, nobody can stop it. But say, for example, you are occupying a residential premises on a rent, and therefrom you are doing work from home, and in work from home you are also conducting certain F&O transaction, and you want to say that, okay, I want to claim the rent against F&O, probably my opinion there would be no, because your residence is the prime activity of that particular area, that is the property. And it is only that you are doing certain F&O transaction and if you can prove that, okay, so much of my uh, daily hours are going only towards the F&O, then I can say you may connect it. Otherwise, prima facie, one should ignore such particular rent being claimed. I would add few more expenses, my dear friends, for your understanding that somebody claims that, look, I have hired some uh, staff and therefore I want to claim a staff salary against my F&O income. My answer to him would be, Sir, if you have hired a staff who is conducting these contracts on behalf of you and you are paying him salary, naturally that is allowable. But if you are saying that, no, I myself conduct f and transaction, but I have a salaried paid person who is helping me somehow, I don't know, how would you prove it? Then claiming such particular expenditure would not be feasible. So when somebody is being hired by you on salaried basis, who is conducting that transaction for you, then naturally that is a salary directly allocatable should be claimed. But if you can't directly create an excess between F&O transaction and salary, then claiming such salary may not be advisable. Depreciation is a very significant issue, my dear friend. You are using a laptop, you are using a mobile, and which is mainly used for conducting such F&O transaction or these transactions on a day-to-day -day basis. Then why not? The depreciation of such item, maybe it is a computer, maybe it is a table, maybe it is a laptop, maybe it is a mobile. You can claim depreciation of such particular item. Your CA would help you in that. Office rent I have already discussed, but there are certain expenses. Say you are conducting all these activities through a business premise where you may be having incurring certain recreation expenses like tea, coffee, lunch or any snacks kind of thing. Why not? You can claim those expenses provided you are able to establish them. Then similarly for that business premise, you might be incurring electricity expenses. You can claim such expenses. Any printing stationery related expenses? Yes, why not? They can also be claimed. My ultimate suggestion to you is, my dear friend, please consult with your charter account. Looking into the facts and circumstances or your tax consultant, a child accountant or a tax consultant would guide you better that okay these expenditure can be claimed and these cannot and that will help you in drawing your final profit and loss account for such purposes. One another interesting issue which I wanted to take up through this video is can deductions under chapter 6a be also claimed against F&O income? And you may say which kind of deductions Bhattiaji you are talking about. I would like to put up before you ATC, ATD, ATE, ATG kind of deduction like you might have contributed LIC, contribution against your F&O income or you might have incurred some medical insurance premium or you might have paid some education loan related interest or you might have donated to an entity. All these expenditure my dear friends are claimable against gross total income. And if your gross total income includes any income from F&O, assuming that there is a positive income, naturally all these expenditure can also be claimed, all these deductions can also be claimed against F&O income. But these are not claimable directly against F&O income computation. These are allowable against gross total income computation. So you see it accordingly and you then accordingly can claim all these deductions in my opinion. Yet this topic, my dear friends, is quite easy one, but naturally going on the facts of the case is a very important point before you start claiming these deductions as I have discussed in this particular video. I hope, my dear friends, you might have got benefited through this video and thank you for being with me. Wishing you all the best. Jai.